The astonishing results of the first round of elections in Brazil has raised a lot of inconvenient questions. It has also revealed a malicious scheme in the vote counting phase that very much lacked sophistication, confirming suspicions of fraud raised by almost everyone in the country. Hello, I am Claudio Lessa reporting from Brasilia, Brazil. Well, let's start from the very beginning. President Jair Bolsonaro has always been on the side of those who criticized the Brazilian voting machines. They miss a very basic feature. The electronically generated results printed at the end of the day cannot be audited. There are no printed receipts that can confirm that a voter chose candidate A and that the machine indeed registered candidate A and not candidate B. A kind of trick that is very, very easy to perform, part of a Cyber Fraud 101. The Brazilian Congress has passed legislation requiring voting machines to be coupled with a small printer. They would not be accessible to voters who would only be able to look through the glass to make sure that the numbers chosen were the ones printed before they pressed the Confirm button to end the voting process. Once the confirm button was pressed on the voting machine, that piece of paper would be cut and stored in a bag, also inaccessible to the voter. Those printed receipts without any voter identification whatsoever to guarantee privacy would serve only to audit the final bulletin created by the voting machine in a transparent effort to physically match the amount of votes electronically registered by the machine, should any problem, suspicion or complaint be raised by anyone. The use of printers, however, was vetoed by the individuals in the Brazilian Supreme Court, a group of scumbag attorneys and lobbyists, none of them lifelong career judges, who landed there thanks to former leftist presidents. More recently, relying on spectacular popular support. President Jair Bolsonaro said several times to the delight of his supporters that his re-election would be surely decided on the first round with at least 60% of the votes given to him. Otherwise, something would be very wrong with the electoral court in charge of the process. Then came election day on October the 2nd. At the end, the astonishing result. His main opponent, former President Lula da Silva, a convicted criminal who was freed from jail and had his convictions ruled at several levels, simply voided by a Marxist occupant of the Brazilian Supreme Court who favors his candidacy, was ahead with close to the needed majority while Bolsonaro trailed a few percentage points behind. The unbelievable and unacceptable result, defined as victory with a taste of defeat, was immediately rejected by almost everyone in the country, especially because Jair Bolsonaro was able to conquer the House and the Senate in a way that has never happened before, along with allied governors who were elected by large margins. Then came some inevitable questions. For example, how come the great majority of candidates allied to Bolsonaro were elected in almost every state and he was not? Why so many dead people turned out to vote? Some 200 Brazilian cities had an amount of votes registered for the quote-unquote unconvicted criminal that was much higher than the population itself. Interestingly enough, when the second round was announced, Jair Bolsonaro refused to talk about fraud in the election during a press conference, quietly referring the subject to the armed forces, who were indeed invited to be part of the scrutiny. At the same time, unofficial accounts started to leak and flood social media. Brazilians are being told, again unofficially, that everything was set for Lula da Silva to win the election in the first round. Initially, it was unofficially reported that the Brazilian army 
was alerted by Russian hackers who had identified an algorithm being used to fraud the results. Later, it was leaked that the algorithm was discovered by the Brazilian army with the help of Israel's secret service, the Mossad. The military intervened while the vote counting was going on, threatening to jail everyone in charge of the final vote count, and the complete fraud was averted, maintaining the possibility of a second round. There have been unconfirmed reports as well that Jair Bolsonaro himself had privately asked Russian President Vladimir Putin for that cyber help during an earlier and very much criticized trip to Moscow to secure the purchase of fertilizers. In any case, the identified algorithm determined that at every 12% of the vote count, Bolsonaro would lose half a percentage point, while Lula da Silva would earn a full percentage point. You can see the movement on your screen. At 12% of the votes counted, Bolsonaro had 48%, while the unconvicted criminal had 42%. At 24%, 47.5% for Bolsonaro and 43% for Lula da Silva. The process continued until 60% of the votes were counted and both candidates were tied with 46% of the votes. At 96% of the votes counted, Lula da Silva was supposed to have reached 49%, while Bolsonaro trailed with 44.5%. Right there and then, with only 4% of the votes remaining to be counted, however, the fraud had already been averted by the military and Lula da Silva was stuck at 48%, short of the 50% plus one vote needed to obtain victory in the first round. Now, a couple of remarks while I emphasize to you the unofficial status of this account that is being leaked to the social media. It apparently remains unofficial because Jair Bolsonaro knows that he finally has all the elements necessary to prove fraud, something he has been chasing since the 2018 elections, when he was elected in the first round, but fraud also forced a second round. At the same time, he wants to strictly play it by the book and avoid being accused of starting another military coup, like Brazil experienced in 1964. Another motive for his decision to shut up is the fact that if he challenges the results at this point, the whole election would be jeopardized, suspending the very favorable results for all alive governors, congressmen and senators. In the meantime, he is gathering political support from allies and even formidable foes, such as former Justice Minister and now Senator-elect Sergio Moro, who, as a judge, was the first to convict Lula da Silva in the car wash operation based in Curitiba, the capital city of Paraná State. At the same time, while refusing to talk about fraud, Jair Bolsonaro tweeted cryptically on Monday, October the 3rd, asking people to stay focused, saying that one of the main and most difficult objectives had been reached on Sunday, quote, We already have what is necessary to free Brazil from the authoritarianism, blackmail and injustice that outrages us so much. The deepest change in Brazil has already begun. It is not for the people to fear it, unquote. Bolsonaro never explained what the main and most difficult objectives were or what he already has. We are being told that the defense minister has asked Alexandre de Moraes, who presides the electoral court, for the source code identified by the Russians and or Israelis to contain the malicious algorithm. 
it has been said that Moraes has refused to turn it to the defense minister, deepening the institutional crisis maintained in secret so far. Now, with the election being concentrated on Bolsonaro and Lula only, while the armed forces know all too well how the fraud is conducted, it is expected that things will change drastically, correcting the course and guaranteeing a second term for Jair Bolsonaro. Reporting from Brasilia, Brazil, I am Claudio Lessa. Thanks for watching.